to Tiger Park is game two of a top 10 matchup from Baton Rouge. Number five, Alabama already clinched a share of the SEC regular season title last night. Going to clash at it once more with the LSU Tigers. Caleb Bro, Tiffany Green here with you. Quick peek at the SEC standings. There were three teams and now there are two with Ole Miss out of the picture. LSU still in play for the regular season championship. The Tigers would need a win today and tomorrow to be named co-champs with Alabama. Meanwhile, the Tide can own it outright with one more victory. And Bama got the lead early and they didn't let go. Yeah, it started with Bailey Hemphill, the big power hitter for this Tide lineup in the first inning in her first at bat. Hit a moonshot, and that opened the door for Montana Fouts, the freshman, to get the opportunity with a lead to do her thing. She helped herself out in the circle defensively, but also used her velocity to get some big strikeouts when needed against one of the best offenses in the country. And then in the seventh inning for Alabama, the bottom of the lineup made things happen with a free pass and an error made by the LSU defense. After that, it was all about getting some timely hits. Five hits in the inning by Alabama's best hitters. Six runs, and that clinched the W for the Tide. Meanwhile, Montana Fouts, as you mentioned, calmed these LSU Tiger bats, only allowed four hits in handing LSU only their second shutout of the season as Mary Beth Gorsuch, the junior out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, will get the start. Yeah, she's going to really try and spin it up to induce some pop-ups, some strikeouts in the upper half of the zone. She's going to throw in the mid-60s. And Alabama last night didn't have any strikeouts, so that's going to be a tough act for Mary Beth Gorsuch to follow as she's got to really trust her defense behind her. Well, that Alabama Crimson Tide lineup so tough. We'll see just a little shift there as KB sides had a couple of hits yesterday. She moves up to the five spot, but just a tough one, two, three, starting off with Alyssa Brown just about ready to get underway and step into the batter's box. Crimson Tide, 48 and six overall on the season. 16 wins and just six losses in conference play. And the Tide, who have not had great success in Baton Rouge, looking to become the first road team since 2006 to win the series. Alyssa Brown, the junior center fielder, with a 2-1 count. Lefty slapper was two for four yesterday, had a stolen base and scored a run as well. Mary Beth Gorsuch, you know her mindset is, don't let her on base. Slaps it over to short. And Alyssa Brown showing off the wheels, beats out the hit and leads off with the base hit. With the speed that Alyssa Brown has, if you get that ball to bounce two or three times, there's a really good chance that you're going to be safe. And this is about as close as it gets. And Alyssa Brown, right when she hits contact, selling it to the umpire, save. And gets the call. Kaylee Tao now at the plate. You mentioned she had a two-run double in that big seventh inning for Alabama in game one. Alabama such a good offensive team, batting well. And Alyssa Brown taking off, trying to get in the second base. And how about Michaela Schlattman from behind the plate, mowing her down. Well, we didn't see Schlattman behind the plate in last night's game. Gets a pitch up in the zone that 
takes her to stand straight up. But look at that throw right on the money in front of second base. And with all the speed that Alyssa Brown has, this is a huge pickup of an out by the LSU Tigers. Just the third time Brown has been thrown out this season. And now three balls, no strikes to Kaylee Tao and nobody on base. Gorsuch starting in her 18th game of the season. Sees that one go outside, a walk to Tao. And last night, Bailey Hemphill did a little of this. And got a pitch on the inside part of the plate, belt high, and she just took it for a ride off the foul pole. And really that was the only run that the Tide would need in yesterday, yesterday's game, although they put up seven. Montana fouls with a big shutout victory. And Pill, the Louisiana native. One of the best in the country. We're knocking him out the park, also ranking nationally for RBI. It was two for three yesterday and had three runs batted in. That's right there from Gorsuch for strike one. It's no surprise that Bailey Hemphill had a good day coming back to her home state of Louisiana. She gets the home run and then another two RBI double in the seventh inning. I mean, you're going to see it a little bit sharper when you're playing in your home state. Last couple of seasons, you see what Hempel has done from last year to this year. Top five, as we mentioned, in home runs and RBI, also boosting that batting average as well to 377. And that's just maturity taking its toll over time, understanding where she's going to be successful, what pitches that she can really hit out. I mean, if she's a, a, a hitter that likes to swing hard, she wants to get her money's worth. So the key is when you are that talented, when you do have that natural ability, is how can you be patient and make sure that you get something that you can really crush. And she simplified her swing a little bit this season and just really worked on getting sharp to contact. The payoff. Swing and foul away. Puts it on the ground and just passed a diving Amber Surrett. So runners at first and second after the base hit from Hemphill. It's a really good first at bat by Hemphill too. This is the third changeup that she got in this at bat or at least an off speed pitch. And she's a little bit out in front on an outside pitch, but just gets her barrel around it enough and hits it in the right spot to get the first base hit of the game. Excuse me, the second base hit of the game for the Tide. Maris Schroeder now at the plate, senior out of Houston, Texas. And a quick trot out to the circle. Michaela Schlattman just wanting to make sure Mary Beth Gorsuch is feeling all right, 11 balls. Eight strikes so far this inning. Yeah. 
That's one of the problems that Mary, Mary Beth Gorsuch has had this season is her strikeout to rock ratio favors walks. So she's got 58 walks on the season, only 47 strikeouts. So really has trouble finding the zone some in some situations. One clips the outside part of the plate. Schroeder lists this one into shallow center, and there's Aaliyah Andrews charging in from center field to grab it. A great job by Andrews. She does such a good job of getting reads off the bat, and that one just dies off Schroeder's bat on contact. So she knows that she's got to really make an aggressive jump and a good read to come in on that ball. And it makes it look easy, frankly, with her speed. She's a really talented outfielder, and I know the Tigers appreciate having her out in center. The lefty KB sides, first pitch swinging over to Surrett. She tosses it to third, and that does it. Couple of hits, two runners left on base. On this Saturday, LSU fans ready to see some offense. Meanwhile, Sarah Cornell in the circle, the junior transfer for Alabama, has been sharp. Yeah, and she's been one of the brightest spots on this entire team. She's going to throw up in the mid-60s, and she's got a really nice rise ball that kind of jumps up through the zone. And she's not afraid to go right and challenge these hitters. She'll try and hit the screwball inside her right. He's right at the hands, and she's fearless out there in the circle. And really good ball to strikeout ratio as well 71 strikeouts to only 44 walks the lsu lineup was quieted yesterday by montana fouts just four hits for these tiger batters elise thornhill came up with a double just one of three extra base hits they need to see some more production and it all starts at the top of the lineup with the speedy lefty slapper and Aaliyah Andrews. She's one of the best table setters in all of college softball. And one of the big reasons that LSU was shut out in last night's game was she only got on one time. SEC leader in hits, runs, and stolen bases. That's in for a strike. Cornell transferred over from Hofstra. It was the 2018 Colonial Athletic Association Pitcher of the Year. This one popped up and caught by Morgan. Savannah Stewart moved up in the lineup as well. Saw good production from her with a pair of doubles. The reigning SEC Freshman of the Week. Yeah, without a doubt, Stewart's been one of the hottest hitters in this LSU lineup, especially over the last 10 games. And she's going to be a slapper, too. Not necessarily the same as Aaliyah Andrews, where she's really ground and pound. She's more of a gap-to-gap -gap power slapper. So she's going to use you know, her timing and her rhythm to try and get a hit to fall in the gap. And she got two in last night's game. And last week was 444 in her games against Louisiana Monroe and Baylor including a triple. She stands with an 0-2 count. Cornell delivers. That pitch looked mightily close. Just off the plate, now one and two. 
Yeah, this is going to be something that you have to keep an eye on. If you are the pitcher catcher for both of these teams is what the umpire is going to give you. I mean, that looked like it, it clipped the outside corner. But that's going to be something as the game continues on, getting an idea for the strike zone and understanding what is going to be a consistent strike for you. And especially for Cornell, because she does work her hand side lane really well. This one fouled away once more from Stewart. Beth Terena in her eighth season at LSU and wanting her team to come around game one, perhaps some nerves early on, now that they know what to expect, perhaps settling in a little bit more in front of their home crowd. Yeah, and make no mistake, they, they played one of the best pitchers in the entire country last night. And it was a tough challenge for them offensively. I mean, they put the ball in play pretty often. Alabama defensively made some good plays. So I think, you know, how do you face a completely different look today in Sarah Cornell, try and chip away a little sooner, and then with runners in scoring position, making sure that you get the job done. I think they had opportunities that they let squander away. Yeah, after last night's game, Tarina mentioned that she felt like that sixth inning, they definitely had an opportunity and they didn't take advantage of it. In these types of games, especially when you're down by a run or two, you've got to jump on them as best as you can. Stewart puts it on the ground and now two away. Back to your point, Kayla, just about this pitching staff. When we asked Beth Terena earlier in the week about how they felt like they could attack it, she says, look, they just do everything well. And so there's no one thing that you can go after uh, because they change speeds and keep the ball down in the zone so well. Yeah, and I think the other thing to build off of what Tarina is saying, they all are a little bit different looking. So Montana Fouts looks different than Cornell, who looks different than Goodman, who's going to be probably waiting in the bullpen at some point in this game or tomorrow. And they all have their different go-to pitches. I think Sarah Cornell is going to work more up in the zone, a little less velocity, fouts, pounds the lower half, and then she'll try and get you to chase up or with the off speed. And then Crystal Goodman, 72, really, really hard velocity, and then a slow, slow, slow change up. So very different style of pitching for all three of them. Cornell working quickly and getting ahead in the counts. Ten strikes compared to just three balls she's thrown thus far. The 0-2 to Amanda Sanchez who fouls it off. The player who's come in and made an immediate impact on this Tiger program. One of the finalists for the USA Softball Player of the Year and leading the team in several categories as a huge lift for Beth Tarina as Sanchez transferred over from Missouri. Tarina hoping her team will get back to the Women's College World Series. Went three straight from 2015 to 2017. And this one hits Amanda Sanchez on the one to count. And so she'll take first base after being hit by the pitch. One just gets away from Sarah Cornell as it works up and right on the arm and maybe a little bit of the back on Amanda Sanchez. It doesn't feel good. And she got all that protection on her arm and it did not hit the protection. It went straight for her body. Protection that was lacking for Cornell's coach Patrick Murphy last night when he 
Took a rocket to the arm. Now Shamaya Sanchez, the cleanup hitter. Takes ball one. Sanchez out of the Metro Atlanta area, hitting just above 300, 16 home runs on the year. Her best season at the plate. Sanchez hits this one high, and Maris Schroeder is right underneath it. And that does it for the first. Six, seven, eight, due up for Alabama when we return. Thanks so much, Peter. Boy, I tell you, Missouri, who would have thought that they would be in the top half of the SEC coming into the season? A dozen wins on the year, and they will be in College Station along with the 12 other teams in the league at Davis Diamond for the SEC softball tournament starting on Wednesday with the championship culminating on Saturday at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. What a week it's going to be. I mean, the way that the SEC has played out this season has been incredible. There's been so many ups, upsets, so much parity. It's come down to the, to the very last inning against these two teams battling for a, an SEC regular season championship. I mean, you can't ask for anything better. Well, I tell you this, these two teams are tied for the most SEC tournament titles with five apiece. And yesterday we referenced that Patrick Murphy was uh, in the line of fire when Claire Jenkins was up to bat. You see him standing much further back and closer to the dugout now that she's at the plate. Yeah, I don't think he wants to get hit again. And Claire Jenkins is the kind of batter that typically has longer at bats and she'll foul off quite a few down the down the third base line. And Jenkins gets a bat on this one over the head of the left fielder Savannah Stewart and the double for Claire Jenkins. She pulls it this time. It's in fair territory and for a two-bagger. Claire Jenkins, who was hitless in yesterday's game, a little bit out in front of the outside pitch, but just throws her barrel enough and has a good finish to just pepper this ball over Stewart's head in left field. And I think Stewart takes a little bit of a, a, a rough angle, kind of cuts it off too soon, and it carries a little bit further good enough for the double. Reagan Dykes, the senior catcher out of Collins, Mississippi. He's at the plate now, 0 for 3 yesterday. Did get on base with a walk. And all the umpires in the stands wanted that to be a strike. Instead, it's 2-0 to Dykes. Good save there from Schlattman. Going to the circle once more to chop it up with Mary Beth Gorsuch. Who's found herself working from behind 
a lot and now her seventh batter that she's faced today. Yeah, and without a doubt, I think the umpire behind the plate has a tighter zone in today's game. So maybe those pitches that are right hitting on maybe a little bit on the outside corner of the plate, maybe just clipping it, ending up a little bit more in the river, aren't being called today. So these pitchers are going to have to make an adjustment. Scott Mayer behind the plate calls that one for a strike. Alex Leap, Robert Guess, our blue crew today. And the walk to Reagan Dykes. We'll take a quick check of the studio update with Peter Burns. Next up for Alabama, third baseman, number zero, Matty Morgan. Well, thanks so much, Peter. And wow, we got a chance to see Mississippi State last weekend as Maddie Morgan doing her job, sacrificing herself, moving over the runners now. Claire Jenkins at third base and Reagan Dykes now at second. But Mississippi State, wow. I mean, they're coming on strong. They took that series against Missouri at home. They swept it. They did it in dramatic fashion. A run rule in game three off of Cat Moore's bat, one of the seniors for the team, and now they go into Gainesville and take the series. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, you look at the SEC tournament, I mean, you could say whoever wins, it's up in the air. All of these teams have beat up on each other. There's so much parity in this league, which is impressive that we're sitting here, Alabama, LSU, going and vying for that tournament, or excuse me, regular season championship. And both of these teams are, are far from, you know, being unblemished on their record. Alabama's got six losses in the lead in first place, and that's, that's a lot. LSU has eight losses. I mean, in the past, you've seen three or four losses will usually typically get you an SEC championship, but not this season. There's been no team that's been able to sweep through and win all their series, with the exception of Ole Miss, who <laughs> is trying to do that. But even Ole Miss hasn't swept an opponent this year. So it's just been really interesting to, to watch and keep track and how talented some of these teams in and where they have holes and who matches well against each other. It's been a really interesting season, and it's making it fun, yeah. that's for sure. The one-two to Wallace, and Skylar Wallace fouls that one away. And Wallace is another one of these players for the Crimson Tide. You look at KB side, Skyler Wallace, that have just elevated their game against tougher competition. And KB side, who's a sophomore, didn't get much experience last season, is getting an opportunity this year. And Skyler Wallace, the freshman, have cemented themselves in the lineup and have been big producers in the bottom of the lineup. This one ball high, Wallace out of... Woodstock, Georgia, just north of Atlanta, was one for four yesterday. Or if you told us, slap and run worked for the first time with Wallace at the plate. <laughs> That's a tough thing to do. <laughs> slap and run for your first time in the last series of regular season SEC play. I mean, it's late in the season for that. But like it's nothing, gets it done and, and makes something happen. Full count. Gorsuch with the pitch. Well, there's no true ace on this staff for LSU. So Gorsuch along with Shelby Sanceri and Shelby Wickersham, Ali Kilponen have all Kind of shared the role in the circle. 
Gorsuch really wanted that one. Instead, the one out walk to load the bases. Top of the lineup due up with Alyssa Brown. Gorsuch really trying to get that pitch moving down in the zone. Little drop ball to clip the outside corner. And as much as Slapman's trying to do her job back there and frame it up, that pitch has just not been called today. And Beth Torina will take a walk out to the circle and have a quick conversation. And you see her walking out there, clapping her hands, trying to motivate her group. Well, tomorrow we've got a three-hour softball bases loaded for you. We'll take you to all seven games for live look-ins as the action heats up throughout the day right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Here are the games, Texas A&M and Tennessee in action at 1 Eastern along with Ole Miss and Georgia. Shortly after that, South Carolina, Missouri, Mississippi State, Florida, all that good stuff. And then you've got Arkansas hosting Auburn, Kentucky, and Texas Tech. And, of course, the final game of this series. There's already some activity in the top of the second inning in the Tigers' bullpen with Shelby Wickersham starting to make a stir. Yeah, and without a doubt, I, I think at this point with the tight strike zone with Mary Beth Gorsuch is really struggling to be consistent thus far in the game. I think you're definitely going to see a relief performance at some point. But they got a long way to go to get themselves out of this inning with the top of the lineup coming up. And they got to be smart here with Alyssa Brown with the amount of speed that she's got. Alabama's one for one yesterday with the bases loaded. Brown one for one here today with a single her first time up. And if I'm Melissa Brown right here, I got to be very patient. Understand that I am not a power hitter. I am more of a slap, put the ball in play, try and run and gun. And so if I'm patient and, and pick up a walk, that is just as good as a hit because of who is behind me, Kaylee Tao and Bailey Hemphill. And I think that's smart 2-0 and o, typically. I mean, that's a good pitch, but for a power hitter, you want to be all over that. For somebody that is more of a patient slapper that's going to hit the ball on the ground on the infield, I think that's a good take. Make her throw strikes. And now three and one. Brown with 11 runs batted in on the year. But as you mentioned, Kayla, she also could take a walk here to drive in a run. She's got 11 base on balls as well. Taking all the way. Now when you're on the base pass, you know Alyssa Brown has that tendency to put the ball on the play in play on the ground in the infield. You better get on your horse as soon as you see a down angle on the bat. Gorsuch missing here. Walks home the first run and the bases are still loaded. This time for Kaylee Tao. Once again, trying to clip that outside corner with the drop, but that's that same one that we saw against Reagan Dykes and Skylar Wallace for that matter, just not close enough to the umpire strike zone today. First pitch strike from Gorsuch. You know, yesterday, both of these teams really struggled with runners in scoring position. They were 0 for 14 before that seventh inning. And then Alabama absolutely exploded four for seven. Kaylee Tao was a part of that charge. Just the top of the second inning, but already it feels like a pivotal point in this game. As Alabama has the ability to unload offensively. 
Bailey Hemphill on deck. Remember, she hit that solo shot yesterday, also had a two-run single. This is what we saw in the big inning from Alabama last night. It started with a walk to the bottom of the lineup, and in this inning we got the double from Claire Jenkins, but followed up with a couple walks and a sacrifice bunt. And then obviously the walk to score the runner from third on the bases loaded. And here, if you're Alabama, you just remain patient and make her make the pitch. The second run walked in by Gorsuch. Yeah, without a doubt, you got to make her throw strikes. And this is one of those situations where Beth Tarina is going to have to make a change because you have to let your defense able to do something behind you. And before it gets out of hand, Beth Tarina is saying, I need to make a change so we will see a new LSU pitcher when we come back. But right now, Bases loaded for Alabama. They're threatening up to nothing. Eggers out of Metairie, Louisiana. Now Wickersham, a young pitcher that's learning and growing as the season goes on. She throws in the mid-60s, and she can spin the ball well in all different directions. She's got a really good drop. But she can also work the curve, the rise, and a, a changeup as well. Coming in with a 2.31 ERA on the season. Just trying to continue to get better as they're approaching the postseason. Her father, Jeff, was the quarterback for LSU. Went on to play for the Miami Dolphins. And Wickersham making her 22nd appearance of the season. At about 37 innings pitch coming into today in conference play from Wickersham. And the first batter she'll face is Bailey Hemphill with nowhere to put her. Well, this could be interesting. And you think of, you know, week in and week out, and freshmen have to grow up. Patrick Murphy said by the end of the season, they're kind of like, Professionals at this point. Softball is what they do. Wickersham to Hemphill. 2 nothing count now. And this is obviously a tough situation. You have the bases loaded. A lot on the line. The crowd, you can tell, has been frustrated. So that energy right now is a little bit negative. It's tough. She's going to have to bear down. What a situation to be in as a freshman. The good news is with the SEC tournament next week and postseason right around the corner, this is great training ground once more to be in this type of situation. And if you're Hemphill, you're thinking what, knowing that you have a favorable count? I mean, she's got to bring it right to you. It's got to be over the middle of the plate, over the heart of the plate with the tight zone. I know you want to hit here, but it's got to be right there. It's got to be a money pitch for you as a hitter. Instead, another walk awarded. Well, we knew that Alabama could put up a lot of runs, averaging just about seven a game. We didn't expect to see them being walked home. No, and this is a situation where LSU luckily has a good enough offense to come back and fight through this, depending on if they can get out of this inning quickly enough. But at the same time, you put your defense and the rest of your offense in a bad position because you, know, you feel so helpless. If your pitcher's not throwing strikes and the zone's tight, you're getting frustrated out there. It's just a long time. It's a long inning. You kind of stall any kind of momentum that you have. So they're going to have to regroup and really fight and push through this inning. One, two count to Mary Schroeder.
And Schroeder strikes out. Big strikeout, second out of the inning. And Shelby Wickersham, you saw the fist pump after it. This is where she is so successful. It's got a really heavy drop ball that falls hard off the table. Induces a big strikeout on Maris Schroeder. It's a good sign for Wickersham just to try and work herself out of this inning and to get comfortable because when you come in with bases loaded and one out, you have no time to find your rhythm to learn the umpire zone. So with that walk, the couple walks, she's got to have to regroup, try and find her rhythm soon. KB Sides gets a piece of that one and foul. We talked about the freshman, excuse me, the sophomore moving up in the lineup. Two singles yesterday, including the one that pushed the final score to seven to nothing. One low, now three and one. Well, LSU had only walked home three runs all season long, and then this inning, they've gotten three. Payoff. Sides gets a piece of it, pops it up, and that does it. And family of networks looking at what would happen if the season ended today. Right now, it would be Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, and Tennessee with a first round by Mississippi State, who we mentioned already swept Florida, excuse me, not swept Florida, but won the game earlier today and took the series from the Gators. They would face off against host Texas A&M in the play-in game. Well, LSU has won the SEC tournament title five times, the last one coming in 07. And then you think about Alabama who knocked off the four-peat run of Florida for the regular season championship. Alabama has a share of it. LSU still with a ton to play for. These two games are so critical. They can share it along with Alabama if they come out with two wins here. And Sarah Cornell catches Shelby Sunseri looking and all she can do is go back and spout. You know, she duels as a pitcher as well. Yeah, she gets the frustration. And the only thing I can say about this, because it's, it's an outside pitch, it's at least higher in the zone than the pitches that we were not seeing called for LSU. And that's the only thing that Cornell had going for her on that pitch because it was questionable, maybe east to west, but it was in the zone from an elevation standpoint. First time up for Amanda Doyle out of California. The senior.
the 2-0 on the way. Doyle pulls this one foul, goes into the Alabama dugout. Well, at any time, this LSU lineup can erupt. They put up 73 runs over their first weekend of play. In conference play, they hung 29 over the weekend. They faced Texas A&M, so they can score, and they can score in bunches, but it's just a matter of first getting on base and having that opportunity. Yeah, without a doubt, and that's what they were lacking yesterday was that timely hit because they set the table pretty well, left seven runners on base in last night's game and just couldn't come up with that key hit when they needed to. You know, in, in credit, both of the pitchers in last night's game, it kind of felt like early in the game with runners on, they just buckled down and got really tough, and they elevated the level of their game, made some really good pitches, and it just turned out to be... LSU that broke a little bit sooner in the circle than Alabama did. Swinging on that 3-2 pitch and Doyle hits it over to third base. Now two retired. Well, next Saturday at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, we'll have the second game of a big three-game series between the Top two teams in the East, number 23, Tennessee, taking on Florida in Gainesville. SEC baseball is also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. At least Thornhill, who we mentioned earlier, had a double yesterday out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, sitting at an even 300. And lines it right out to Skylar Wallace. A one, two, three inning for Sarah Cornell and the Alabama Crimson Tide. For more information, make sure you go to St. Pete Clearwater EliteInvite.com. Wind kind of blowing out here in Tiger Park as Claire Jenkins leading it off for the Crimson Tide. She doubled in her last at bat, scored a run, and this Alabama offense that has just been revved up all season long. First in several categories in the conference. It's been really impressive to see the transition between this season and last season for Alabama because really from a roster perspective, they haven't gained that much, but I think the mentality is what's changed. They look a lot hungrier. They're having more quality at bats. Not a lot of holes in the lineup. And that's a big credit to not only the coaching staff, but these players for buying in in the offseason to really put in the work to make some adjustments to be more complete hitters and a more complete lineup one through nine. I think to your point, it's been the upperclassmen that have really bought in. You know, Claire Jenkins, a junior, Reagan Dykes on deck, one of the seniors, and they've all been hungry and, and wanting a lot more, especially coming off that Supers loss last year at Washington. Now Reagan Dykes on deck and Courtney Yettens named team captains and that's never happened in the history of Alabama softball so it's a big deal that they valued the leadership of those players to lead the way from an emotional game we need to be ready to go every single time and hold each other accountable
Jenkins is trying to get <laughs> Coach Murphy again. <laughs> you see he's standing a little bit further up. You know, last time she was at back, he was back near the dugout. And, and now he's, he's stepping out on a little faith. And, and what we continue to refer to is last night when Jenkins just scorched this one foul and she's like, ooh. Sorry about that, coach. I'm surprised he let her on the bus today on the way to the field. <laughs> It was all smiles before the game as well with that. Standing confidently in the third base box and striking out is Jenkins. This is a really nice pitch by Shelby Wickersham. This one's coming in at 58 miles an hour. It just has a little bit different of a velocity enough to get Claire Jenkins to pull on it a little bit too hard from her upper body and be a little bit out in front and early. And this is the opportunity where you can see Wickersham really work now that she's not coming in with the bases loaded. She's finding the zone a little bit more frequently now. When you go back to your comment about Reagan Dykes and Courtney Gettins being named senior captains, part of that being such a big deal, and I think what may have led into that decision, and according to Coach Murphy, was the fact that you know they were locked in since day one. They've been ready to go, and ever since last year in Seattle in Super Regionals, they wanted to come back with a vengeance, and have done so. I think another big piece of that is you know you start with the right mentality, and then you get some big pitchers to come in and set the tone from a work ethic standpoint. You know, you have Montana Fouts that comes in as a freshman and they say that she's the hardest worker in, as a pitcher that they've ever seen come through the program. Sarah Cornell also is an emotional pitcher, brings a lot of energy. So I think when you have players like that join the team, it only, it only adds to the emotional aspect of fighting and playing hard every single game. If you're just joining us, Tiffany Green, Kayla Bro with you. Tiger Park is lit as Alabama LSU duking it out once more. Crimson Tide trying to win the SEC regular season outright with a win either today or tomorrow. They already have clinched a share of it. LSU also trying to grab a piece of it. They could be named co-champs. They've got some work to do, trying to dig out of a 3 nothing hole. And Dykes flies out. Two away. You know, you question how a freshman would respond in this instance. You come in, like you mentioned last inning, with the bases loaded. Wickersham has been able to get first pitch strikes in. She's recorded a couple of strikeouts and, and really kind of helped to stop some of the bleeding, if you will, last inning. Yeah, six for ten first pitch strikes now. and. Just trying to get her drop ball elevated a little bit. She was kind of falling it off the table too much. Maddie Morgan lines this one into right field, and it's out of here. Home run. The solo shot for Maddie Morgan. Talk about elevating your pitches. Left that one hanging well over the zone for Maddie Morgan. In the eighth spot of this lineup, Gets a pitch belt high. That's a mistake for Wickersham. And Maddie Morgan takes advantage and gets fired up. It's one more run on the board for the tie and has a nice swing to get her fourth of the season. SEC leading 73 home runs now for the Crimson Tide. That's best for top 10 in the country. And again, it goes back to just how powerful this offense is and the production one through nine. 
That's an eight hole hitter hitting that home run. Yeah, and Coach Murphy said that on, on the call this week. You know, they don't really have a hole in the lineup. They don't have a hitter that has been one of those hitters that goes in slumps or strikes out a lot. They have a really complete team, a potent offense that's ready to go every single game. And it's a very dynamic offense, too, where they, they can all bring something a little bit different to the table. With the exception of Alyssa Brown, they all have a little bit of power, can hit the long ball, can all hit for average, you get a base hit in the gap. They can slap and run, bunt and run, hit and run, and that's what makes them effective. And Wickersham was working on a one, two, three inning before giving up that solo home run to Morgan. 3-1 now to Skylar Wallace. Smack that one foul. Alabama put up seven runs last night. They've got four here in the top of the third against seventh ranked LSU. Wallace gets that one pass, a couple of diving infielders for the Tigers. And the two out single. It's another good at bat today by Skylar Wallace. The second time she's taken the count to full. And knows that Wickersham's going to throw that heavy drop ball. So with a full count, two strikes, just protecting. Gets as on plane as she needs to be to just pepper this ball through the right side of the infield. And Wallace taking off. She's safe. Remember, Schlattman caught Alyssa Brown stealing back in the first inning. No fear from the Crimson Tide. Keep things motion in motion on the bases. Skylar Wallace gets a good jump on an elevated throw from Schlattman and gets into scoring position with two outs. Now perfect on the season with 16 stolen bases and 16 attempts. And you saw just around the second base area how it was just a little muddy. You saw some water absorbed in the infield because there was a huge system that moved through the area earlier. Thankfully, it's clear skies now. fly out to center, and that does it. Maddie Morgan, the eight-hole hitter, gets an elevated pitch and drives it to give the Tide a four-run lead. Big things to get, as you see here, to be some of the best offensive producers in the entire SEC. And when you're thinking about the Southeastern Conference and just how tough this league is across all of college softball. That is saying a whole lot. First pitch swinging from Michaela Schlattman and lines out to Alyssa Brown. Well, you credited Montana Fouts for the job that she did yesterday. The freshman is up for a National Player of the Year award. She's one of the 26 finalists. But when you look at this trio in the circle for Alabama with Sarah Cornell, Montana Fouts, and Crystal Goodman, I mean, they have the top three ERAs in the conference. And not only that, they've allowed the fewest runs at just 60. I mean, a lot of teams just have not had success getting hits off of them. 
No, and they're all three talented hitter or pitchers that, and we talked about that, that bring something different to the table, but they're only as good as working with each other. Montana Fouts is better because she's got Sarah Cornell to throw on day two. And the same thing with Crystal Goodman is she brings something a little bit different, and if she can give you three or four good innings, that only helps your two starters, Fouts and Cornell. And, and the numbers say it all. In SEC play, the top three pitchers, I mean, there's it's not a coincidence why Alabama right now is at the top of the standings when you have depth in the circle because what we're seeing is an incredible amount of offensive production from team to team this year across the country. And I think you look at especially what Sarah Cornell was able to do with Montana Fouts. She missed a few weeks because of an injury. She, she being Sarah Cornell went 5-1 and one during that stretch, picked up wins against Mississippi State, South Carolina, Georgia as well. Also racked up an SEC Pitcher of the Week honor as well. So it's nice to be able to rely on former CAA Pitcher of the Year and Sarah Cornell as that one is hit foul off the bat. It says a lot about Cornell's ability to come from Hofstra and step right into the SEC and be successful immediately. And she had an opportunity last season. I, I remember watching her in, in regionals against South Carolina on the road, and she almost upset the Gamecocks to take their team to a Super Regional. It was really a good game. She pitched incredibly well. It was a really tough pitcher to face for South Carolina, and here she is now in the SEC. And how about a couple of players coming over from Colonial Athletic Conference in Hofstra? As Kim Ward has been a big boost for Missouri under the old Hofstra head coach now in her first year at Missouri, Larissa Anderson. We got a chance to see the pride earlier in the year at that St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. when registering in at 70 miles per hour from Cornell. <laughs> Coming in hot is KB Sides. Two away. Back to the top of the order with Aaliyah Andrews. That Andrews name is synonymous with standout at LSU. Her older sister, AJ, was a terrific outfielder as well. Yeah, the Alabama defense respects AJ, or excuse me, Aaliyah Andrews so much. Look what they're playing. I mean, Maddie Morgan is up in her face. And she's got so much speed, she's so naturally athletic, so as soon as she puts contact on the ball, she is gonna motor down the first baseline, get out of the box really quickly. And that's gonna force the defense to have to make a quick play. And that was a focus for both of these teams defensively this week. How can we keep Alyssa Brown and Aaliyah Andrews off the bases? And a big role is gonna go to Amanda Sanchez at third base for LSU and Maddie Morgan, the third baseman, if they can crowd the plate a little bit, move up the line, play off the line well, come across and make a throw, it's the only way you're going to be able to get them out. I'll tell you this, you had a chance to play against A.J. Andrews. Yes, I did. And so from your take, who's faster, <laughs> older sister A.J. or Aaliyah? I don't, I, that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, I remember when I was calling the SEC tournament, I was talking to A.J. Andrews when she was still playing, and I was like, talking to her, and she was like, well, we should race. Let's figure out who was faster, <laughs> you or me. And I was like, uh, no, thank you. 
I'll, I'll skip out on that one. I'm, I'm already graduated. I've done all I can do. I'm out of shape now. <laughs> so I can't imagine how competitive the two of them are between each other. But they're both world-class speed, without a doubt. Well, I posed that question to you because we had a chance to ask Aaliyah who she thought was faster. We don't know. People say that I am, and our strength trainer said that I am, but uh, we've never raced. Oh. I think we're both kind of scared to find out the answer. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave that a mystery for the rest of our life. And I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. I bet, it, I bet it would be one of those things where one of them wins one time and then on a bad day the other one would win. I bet it would go back and forth without a doubt. Bro, you're a three-time All-American from Alabama. You used to motor down the line as well. I think that's what the beauty of this sport is and why hitters like myself, like AJ and Aaliyah Andrews, are able to flourish is because they can slap, they can put the ball on the ground and then use your speed. And speed doesn't slum. It is such an opportunity. But you got to put it in play. And instead, striking out Sarah Cornell, her second strikeout of the game. And we'll Baton Rouge, Alabama leads 4-0. Patrick Murphy, the Alabama head coach, on with us now. And, Coach, just the way that your pitchers have come out and attacked this LSU lineup, what have you liked so far today from Sarah Cornell? A absolutely, really everything. She's been getting ahead of people. You know, we've been talking in the dugout. Me and uh, Kaylee Tao were saying, man, she's 1-2, uh, 2-2, two, 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 oh, two, to almost every hitter, uh, really hitting her spots. I think she's got good velocity. Um, I mean, she's doing a heck of a good job right now. And, Coach, you know, in both games, the bottom of the lineup have really come through to get things started. What do you like about some of the hitters that preside down there in your lineup? I, well, you know, I've always said I'd like to have a little surprise in the nine spot, but Maddie Morgan has been one of our most consistent hitters all year long. I think she's sitting about 320, 325 right now. She hit the home run. Skylar Wallace is over 300. She got the single, uh, I think, right after her. Um, it's just been a really... Uh, complete lineup this year. You've got eight of the nine kids that can hit a home run. We've got obviously the speed at the top, but I also got five green light girls that can go at any time. So not only do they have speed, but they have pop. And that, that's the winning combination. And thanks to Michelle Diltz, our strength coach, she gets it done in the weight room. All right. Thanks, coach. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for being here, you guys. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, Kalo, and listening to Coach Murphy, I think you hit it spot on with your analysis of speed power and balance and, and that's what every coach is trying to get in their lineup some maybe favor power or speed or balance a little bit more depending on who they are and what they like to recruit but I think that you look at these two successful teams in LSU and Alabama and they really bring a lot to the table and diversity to their lineups and I think that's really important because Sometimes if you have too many hitters that are, you know, too many righties in the lineup or too many lefties or, you know, too many with the same type of swing, you get uh, into a situation where they all struggle against the same kind of pitcher. And when you have diversity in your lineup in terms, in terms of skill set, in terms of swings, then sometimes you break up that monotony of doing the same thing over and over again. And I think that's where these two teams can be successful. in there for a strike. You were part of that 2012 national championship team. How many comparisons do you see between your team and this one? I think without a doubt a lot of comparisons and we've looked at the stats and there's a lot of things that they have that we had back in 2012. And I think about that team you had two lefties at the top of the lineup with me and Jennifer Fenton and brought a lot of speed to the table and then you had some big consistent power hitters like an Amanda Locke, a Kayla Hunt that provided some pop and some big RBI support and then you had hitters that could do a lot like Kaylee Tao. Kaylee Tao knocks this one for a base hit but just looking at how those numbers shape up. Batting average, pretty similar. I think the edge right now goes to the 2012 team, but 
runs per game and home runs, you said those were among the most important. Yeah, without a doubt. It comes down to timely hittings and uh, timely hitting and who's going to get that big hit. And when you score a lot and when you hit a lot of home runs, those two kind of coincide with each other. And that's so important is if you get good performances in the circle from your starters, you come up with a timely hit, man, you can win every single game that you play. And that sounds obvious. You know, you score more runs than the other team kind of a deal. But, I mean, it's not. I, I think understanding the urgency when you get in the box with a certain situation with a runner in scoring position, you got to come through and some players just elevate their game in those moments. Both of these teams are a good example of that. Well, Bailey Hemphill, who is at the plate, has definitely good, done a great job of that this season. 22 home runs, a model of consistency at the plate. To go along now with 67 RBI. Puts this one over to the ground. Sanchez over to Shamaya Sanchez and the Five, four, three, double play. That's just what the LSU defense needed. No doubt exactly what they needed is Bailey Hemphill hooks around this ball, hits it right to Sanchez, and the quick turn over at second from Shamaya Shan Sanchez to get the out of one. That's a great job to help your, help your pitcher out. And hopefully you use that to Kind of get some more momentum as you get out of this inning and potentially go back to the dugout and try and chip away at this score. That went off. Well, Alabama's last series win in Baton Rouge came back in 2005 by way of a sweep since then, and especially since Tiger Park opened. Crimson Tide have not had the greatest luck inside, but they changed the tide yesterday with a win in game one, and they lead here 4 nothing in the top of the fourth. The one-two from Wickersham and gets a swing and a miss, the strikeout, and Shelby Wickersham. Rouge for game two between fifth-ranked Alabama and seventh-ranked LSU. The Tigers head coach joining us now. And Coach Torino, when you look at what Shelby Wickersham has come in to do, two and two-thirds inning, Struck out three and only allowed one run. How would you assess her performance in relief? I think she's doing a good job. I'd like to do without the one run, but I think she's doing a good job. Tough situation for a freshman. She's going to be a great pitcher in the future of this program. And coach, now that you've had a chance to see Cornell for three and a half innings, what is going to be the biggest key as you move forward to try and get some production? Yeah, she's doing a great job. She's really talented. They have a really deep staff, and, you know, they're, they're doing a great job. So we just got to have confidence at bats and get back to swinging the way we know we're capable of. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks. Well, Beth Tarana picked up her 100th, 100th SEC victory earlier in the season against the Florida Gators, and here they're searching for win number one against Alabama. These two teams did not meet a season ago, but LSU has led the series overall. Been back to back one, two, three innings for Sarah Cornell, who has one strike on Savannah Stewart. 
Now 0-2. Eight wins during conference play with a 1.53 ERA for Cornell. And she's yet to give up a hit today. Cornell's last outing was a complete game victory against Kentucky in game two. And she's pitching a good one here this afternoon or evening. Tried to get Stewart to chase, she wouldn't. One ball, two strikes. Stewart, who didn't play her first game of the season until February 8th against Iowa, has been hot as of late. She's battling here. I think this is a good move in terms of positioning her at the two spot in the lineup, just to try and get things changed up and trying to get a little bit more offensive production because what you want is the opportunity for Amanda Sanchez to come up with runners on base. And she's been getting on base lately. Puts this one into play, and that's the first hit of the game for LSU. And Savannah Stewart has just been a machine driving the ball the opposite way. She's a power slapper, so she's going to really make sure that she controls her barrel, gets good extension and good placement in the left center gap. And she's been so consistent all weekend long with that kind of hit. Not only breaks up the no-no, but once again, now you have an opportunity with your best hitter up with the runner on board. And to Sanchez at 4.05 for average. And you could just hear the Tigers fans really come alive after that hit from Stewart. This is the first sign, a sign of life that we've really seen from LSU, maybe since early in game one. Tigers fans are waiting for something to cheer about. Looking for their first run of the series and hard hit by Sanchez. So back to back singles. And the Tigers batter starting to wake up. This is the best opportunity that LSU's had all game long. And Without a doubt, Amanda Sanchez gets another hit, and she hit that thing hard, too. Two on, no out. For the cleanup, Shamaya Sanchez. With LSU changing up their lineup today, now you get in a situation where if Shamaya Sanchez gets this sacrifice bunt down, now all of a sudden you have Shelby Sinceri waiting in the wings who wasn't there previously. Sanceri just one home run behind Shamaya Sanchez. Sanceri with 15. Sanchez with the team leading 16 home runs.
Swung hard, fouled it off. Oh, you can see yeah. right there. She was trying to rip that ball. This is the first opportunity tonight that they've had a runner in scoring position. 0 for 11 in yesterday's game. Just couldn't get the job done. You can tell Shamaya Sanchez getting ready to swing. Dropping her backside, potentially trying to elevate this thing out the park. This is a player who has battled all four years, having a great senior season, and pops this one up for out number one. But still an opportunity for Shelby Sunsiri. Sinceri has had a knack this season for knocking in runs, pacing the Tigers with 55. And Sinceri just gets underneath that one. This one loops into left field. And bases loaded now for the Tigers. The Tigers take advantage of Mayor Schroeder out in left field playing very deep. A little blue pit to load the bases. Now we've seen three hits this inning after going through the lineup without getting a hit in this game. Clearly making some adjustments better at bats. Looks like LSU's being a little bit more aggressive the second time around as well. When they get a pitch close to the zone, they've been more in attack mode. And we saw this in the second inning for Bama. They had the bases loaded. You felt like that was a big momentum shift in the game. And now LSU with an opportunity to steal it back here. Yeah, without a doubt, and they're trying to get the crowd into it. Put some pressure on Sarah Cornell. And that's the advantage of playing in Tiger Park, is that you have the fans at your back. And they're going to do what they can to try and stir up maybe a little nerves in the circle, put a little pressure on the defense to make a perfect play. And that's what playing at home is all about, right? Oh, yeah. Fans in purple and gold are ready. So is Amanda Doyle. Three year starter in this program was the offensive leader a season ago. Just shortly after the top of the half hour, Caleb Bro took the green with you. Bases loaded, LSU, their first real threat of the game. Trying to even the series at one all. Like that swing on the 2-0 pitch from Amanda Doyle, who's been 0 for in the series so far. And like you said, she was there, one of their best offensive producers last season. So you know the potential's there. It's having a little bit of a down year. Moved more to the bottom half of the lineup. But the power potential's there. The Doyle takes this high pitch into left field, looking to tag up. 
is Savannah Stewart. And crossing the plate for the first run is LSU. 4-1. Bama still leads, but the Tigers trying to chip away. This is a big play for LSU. As you can see Stewart tagging over from third. There's no chance with the speed that she has. And it's the first time that we've seen them score on an Alabama pitcher all weekend long. And you go with your, your sack fly, anything to the outfield, and that's a good at-bat by Doyle. Just to start to chip away, you don't have to get this game tied up in one swing, although you could have. But good positive offensive production for the, for the Tigers. And you just kind of wondered as this game was going on, how long would it take yep. for them to come up with a hit? They've gone off for three in this inning. Elise Thornhill with the 0-1 count. And this one popped up. A couple of infielders calling for it. And that does it. Well, some energy being pumped back into Tiger Park with LSU getting a run. In Oklahoma City, but first we'll find out who's going. The selection show on Sunday, May 12th at 9 Eastern on ESPN2. And then you can follow the regionals and super regionals all the way to the Women's College World Series on our ESPN networks. There's so much conversation and speculating going in, Kayla, about who could make it there, who's playing well. UCLA got upset yesterday by Stanford, Arizona and Washington in a big series. Northwestern got game one win against Minnesota. They were in action earlier today over on ESPN for game two. And Northwestern trying to stay undefeated, but they were running into some trouble against Minnesota in today's game a little bit earlier. But now we're getting to that point where it's so exciting because, you know, all that work you put in during conference play is starting to come to fruition at the end of the road. And we're just trying to see who's going to finish out in those, you know, top eight or top 16 seeds to have the ability to host a regional and super regional. I'm just finding out that the Wildcats had their undefeated streak snapped in conference play, falling to Minnesota. And you turn your attention to the SEC and just looking at the RPI, again, one of the many different ways that the committee decides the seating and who gets in and all that good stuff, like a strength of schedule, and among others. Seven, eight, nine sticks out why? Well, I think it's really interesting to me. Seven s s just stands out because Florida, in my opinion, has underperformed this season. And I think the challenge is, is that, you know, they've done well. They've played a really tough non-conference schedule, but they haven't really had any big wins this season. They haven't had any solidifying wins where I'm like, yes, that's a team that could get to the World Series. Now, do they have the potential because Barnhill's in the circle? Absolutely. Have they proven it thus far? Not yet. And then Alabama LSU right now playing each other so that their RPI is not going to go anywhere. And I think these two teams at the top of the SEC standings right now are well deserving to be top eight seeds. And I would be very surprised at the end of the season, no matter how they do in the SEC tournament, if they were left out of the top eight host spots. In your mind, are both LSU and Alabama the front runners for the conference with the best chance to get to Oklahoma City? No doubt. I think that throughout the season consistency wise that they've proven themselves. I think another team that looks really good that maybe is one of, of the teams that's peaking at the end is a Kentucky. Claire Jenkins trying to get the sacrifice bunt down. I think the crowd's complaining a little bit because the question is whether or not it hit her in the box or out of the box. And right there as it pinches her back hip to right elbow, she's definitely standing in the box. It's a good call by the umpire. And 
and this one nicks her on the side and she's grabbing it. That one looked like it hurt. Is that instant karma for hitting <laughs> yeah. Murphy yesterday? <laughs> Goes up and away, up and in, excuse me, to Claire Jenkins. Just pounds her right in the back. It's kind of interesting because we've seen, you know, Wickersham settle in lately, and then this inning, after the offense comes up with a big run and gets some kind of momentum, you give up a walk and a hit by pitch. It's really not what you want to give your team confidence and, and keep that momentum on your side. And here's the deal, Beth Terena, you know, said because we don't have a go-to pitcher like we've had in years past where we had a couple of All-Americans in the circle, we're going to need the freshmen especially to step up now and through the postseason. Yeah, and it's going to be a question for Beth Terena as they move and continue is who's going to really be that person that's going to be the front runner to get those big starts in the postseason and then who's going to be the best option to go to off the bench and say hey we need you in relief and those are both difficult roles and very different roles for the pitchers to play so you got to figure out who's going to be the best and put you up in the best situation sacrifice bunt laid down by reagan dykes and trying to get just a little too greedy is kb sides and she's tagged out at home Good play there and heads up from Shamaya Sanchez, the second baseman. The Crimson Tide trying to push their luck a little bit with this play and get a cheap run with KB Sides trying to go all the way from second to home. It's a good job, a heads up play by the Tigers to not be fooled and to jump all over this opportunity to get themselves a big out at the plate. Quick question, in that situation, is that on the runner or the coach? You know, I have to go back and, and look and see what Murph's <laughs> arm is doing when he's, he's waving her around or not. And I think sometimes, you know, players like KB Sides that are green light girls that he was talking about earlier that can run a little bit have the opportunity to, to use it as a replay and if they see something to take it. Because by the time in some situations it's too late for the third base coach to tell you to advance or not. However, I think, you know, you had a situation where you had second and third and you were going to have one out. I think that's one where you'd be a little bit more patient because those security runs are going to go a long way against a really tough offensive team. Especially since Maddie Morgan had a solo home run shot her last time up. Yeah, it's also true. And she's got a tendency to lift the ball a little bit. So she hits it to the outfield, gets a sack fly potentially. Now that, that option's off the table. Well, back in the third inning, this is what Maddie Morgan did. It's an elevated pitch and takes advantage of it. It is a really simple short swing. She doesn't even really follow through, but generates a ton of power from her backside to get to contact quickly and get that ball out of the park. The grounder over to Wickersham and Perhaps a wasted opportunity for Alabama to tack on some more insurance. Shelby Wickersham does her job. SEC regular season title outright with a win either today or tomorrow. LSU would need to take the series in order to be named co-champs along with the Crimson Tide. First time Alabama won at Tiger Park last night and that was the first time since 2016 it was their only win up until game one it's been so fun getting to watch this series just because you understand what's at stake and you know that these players understand what they're fighting for and what they're playing for schlattman driving this one deep into the outfield on the warning track is Alyssa Brown one down and this is why you come to the SEC and this is why you want to play big-time softball is for these moments and these opportunities 
And if you're Alabama, it's, you know, how can we just buckle down and get this series under our belts and finish this game and get a W? And for LSU, it's kind of the opposite. My back's against the wall. I'm in a hole. How can I dig myself out? And how can I, you know, break out of a slump and try and get some momentum back and try and fight to play for a championship still? I mean, we talk a lot about the tournament and celebrating the SEC tournament championship, but the SEC regular season says a lot about your team. This one smacks pretty good. This one dribbles all the way to the wall. And Amber Surratt with a one-out double. The senior Amber Surratt gets a pitch well over the strike zone, just gets it off the outside corner a little bit. Quick hands right to the ball to drive this thing. Good enough for a double in the gap. That's exactly what the Tigers need. Just some simple hitting and to turn the lineup over. Get hitters like Sanchez, like Aaliyah Andrews, back up to the plate with an opportunity. And even Schlattman on that last fly out. I mean, she hit that about as far as you can hit it without it going out of the park. So they're on Cornell right now. I'll tell you this, since LSU picked up their first hit last inning, they sprinkled three in that third, and then the fifth double of the season for Amber Surrett. Now they're seeing the ball actually drop. Yeah, without a doubt, LSU's definitely made some adjustments and picked it up offensively. And I think you can see there's been a little bit more of an edge to their at-bats. They're being a little bit more aggressive, having more quality swings rather than maybe being a little bit defensive. They're being the aggressor against Sarah Cornell, who throws pretty hard in the upper 60s, and sometimes she'll touch 70 every once in a while. But she's bringing it, and they got to have a response. And so far, they're responding better. Andrews puts it on the ground to short. And the move, the runner moves to third base. Well, Sunday, be sure to tune in to Rally Cap for a breakdown of the week that was in baseball and softball with highlights, analysis, and interviews. They also get you set up with a look ahead at the upcoming week's best schedule, matchup, whatever you want to call it. Rally Cap this week at 7 Eastern, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. I love me some Rally Cap. Oh, yeah. Good show. Tune in this week. Maybe there's like a surprise visitor. Who knows? <laughs> Slight plug. Slight plug. Could we see your beautiful face? Maybe. Pop up. That'd be a big treat. Absolutely. And, you know, and Rally Cap is a good opportunity where it's very, like, casual. Let's talk baseball, softball, good conversation. David DeLucci, Madison Shipman are awesome. It's just a good, fun way to bring the end of the weekend in SEC baseball and softball. Well, I'm glad they allowed you to come out of the studio and join me in the booth this season, <laughs> Kayla. pitch to Savannah Stewart. Low for ball two. Can Sarah Cornell 
hold off the Tigers or does LSU have a little two out rally in them? fouls it away. Been really impressed with Stewart throughout this series. I mean, as a freshman, you can tell that she's just gotten better as the season's progressed on. And sometimes it takes some a, a bit of time to settle in and get to the level of the SEC. But she's done it so well. Worked her way up into the second spot in the lineup. Has quality at bats and three hits against a tough Alabama pitching staff. Just pulled this pitch. It was coming inside, and we've seen some pretty solid freshmen around the league. Stewart, who we mentioned already, was the SEC Freshman of the Week. Jasmine Rollins from Missouri, who is up for the NFCA Freshman of the Year Award. Kayla Kowalik, who has come on late, as you mentioned earlier, the Cats have been surging out of Kentucky. Putting this one into play. Sometimes you just gotta hit them where they ain't. Savannah Stewart with an RBI single with two outs. Stewart just continues her hot streak. Is that ball up in the zone on the outside corner and she gets and meets the plane of that ball. Hits it off the end, but just finds a way to hit it hard enough to land on the grass and pick up another run to start to chip away at this lead in the bottom of the fifth and and more importantly pass the bat down to Amanda Sanchez. And Amanda Sanchez is intense. She's always had that look in her eye, but there's something you can tell that today, it's her senior year, last home games this weekend at, at Tiger Park, big time competition, a lot at the line. There's no better feeling than getting it done for the team, your team at the plate. She's got that knee height, that you know major league style swing where she's gonna generate a lot of energy, but she does it with actually a lot of control, which is pretty rare, which is what makes her such a good hitter. And she's got that mental piece. So tough to get out. That would sharply hit foul. And I think when you look at Amanda Sanchez, she's that player that's just a gamer. I think you'd know a little thing or two about that as well. Just when the moment arises, she steps to the level, raises it, and perhaps exceeds it. That's what she's done all throughout her career. And her senior campaign has been no different. But gets underneath it, pops it up. But LSU continuing to cut down the lead. It's now down to two, right in half. Alabama got it on the board first back in the second inning, but it was rather unorthodox. Yeah, it took advantage of some, some costly mistakes from the LSU pitching staff. Three walks, three runs, and then Maddie Morgan got a big solo shot to give the tie a four-run lead in the third. And Sarah Cornell has been 
dangerous in the circle. Done a good job of inducing some outs, getting a couple strikeouts, especially against some of the best hitters in this lineup. But LSU starting to chip away, making some adjustments, and really Savannah Stewart at the top of the lineup in the number two spot has been incredible. Two hits on the day, and she's really made the difference for this LSU team in terms of getting things going and production. So Shelby Wickersham, who came in relief for Mary Beth Gorsuch, who started this game back in the second inning, has only allowed one run since. A walk, a single, and a run scored for Skylar Wallace. Caleb Bro, Tiffany Green with you. Alabama trying to nurse this 4-2 lead to win the SEC regular season outright as Wallace hits it over to first base and she's tagged out. But if we know one thing, LSU is not gonna go down without a fight. And you know they have to have taken it personally given the fact that they were shut out for just the second time this season in the opening game of this series. They're home at Tiger Park for senior weekend. And Alyssa Brown trying to beat out the bunt and does not. Very close at first base. Alex Leap had the good look at it. Shamaya Sanchez, all smiles. That's a Brown trying to be sneaky and draw a little bump play. It's just a little bit too hard as it rolls to Wickersham. And the hustle is there for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the right call. And it goes back and forth because I, I look back at Alyssa Brown's first hit of the game. Maybe got a favorable call. Check swing, veering to her left was Amanda Sanchez. Makes that play look routine. One, two, three inning for the Tigers. Part of the order coming up. Week's SEC tournament. Very interesting. Alabama can hold tight to that one seed with a win today. Top four with a bye, and then several games on Wednesday as well to start things off from Davis Diamond in College Station, Texas. We've been trying to drive home from yesterday to now. Just all that is on the line. Alabama can win the title outright. They've already claimed a share of their sixth SEC regular season title. LSU could also claim a bit of that crown as well if they win here today and tomorrow. And Samaya, Samaya Sanchez getting it going. I'm just going to put in that work, and I'm going to do the dang thing. Shamaya Sanchez has been swinging like this all game long and finally connects, opens up her front side, sits on that inside screwball to tattoo this thing out of the park, because she knew it right away. Getting the crowd fired up, getting her team fired up, trying to get them back in this game. And when you see her come home, she is all pumped up. The chopper style on the way in the home plate. 
When you talk about the way she started this year, she was only seven home runs for all of last season, plus 10 this year. And she started that home run celebration and everybody has followed suit. And Shelby Sanceri who singled her last time up. Now sees her team trailing just by one. And when you're looking at Sarah Cornell and just the way she pitched going into that fourth inning, I mean, she had complete, complete command and control. But once that no-hitter was broken up, it seemed like things changed a little for her. Yeah, without a doubt. And obviously Cornell is working hard out there. But at some point, a good offense like LSU is going to make adjustments. And we saw that from Shamaya Sanchez. Sat on that inside pitch. And she was trying to jam right. He's trying to go at the hands. And she opened up her front side and absolutely took that ball for a ride on the inside corner of the plate. And now they're going to bring in the freshman Montana Fouts. Well, she picked up the win yesterday in that complete game shut up. We'll see if she can hold the Tigers down. We'll come right back to Baton Rouge. Fouts trying to come on with a repeat performance from last night. Yeah, they did a nice job in the start against LSU. Pitched seven innings of a complete game shutout. Did a good job of mixing in a lot of different looks. Bring in the velocity and the heat. She's going to throw almost as high as 71. 70 miles an hour pretty consistently and the freshman has a big opportunity with a one-run lead to try to finish this game off and get six out and she's only given up two home runs on the season because she pounds the lower half of the zone got a lot of control she'll mix in the change up every once in a while but i like that she throws her curveball in the lower half she can get batters to chase up in the zone with the rise but her bread and butter when she gets ahead is low Coming in with one ball, no strikes to Shelby Sunseri, no outs for the LSU Tigers. And blows that one past Sunseri. You feel like this is a moment that has continued to build over the season and one that Montana Fouts embraces. And once again, this is why you come and play at a big time school like Alabama, like LSU you want to be in this moment. Bounce, checking her wristband, gets the signal, the pitch on the way. And Sarah Cornell through five innings, three runs on six hits and two strikeouts for the junior transfer. And look, LSU got four hits. Off of Fouts yesterday. We'll see if they can figure her out tonight. Full count swinging the grounder over to second base and one down. I think this is a good opportunity for Fouts. She came in at the right time. So Sarah Cornell, you could just tell inning after inning, LSU was just trying to pick up more momentum, and we're doing that. And so after you give up the home run, it's not like a situation that Wickersham had to come in earlier with the bases loaded or runners in scoring position. She got to come in with a clean, clean slate after the home run. And it's a big advantage comparatively to what Wickersham had to, to come in and face. Amanda Doyle had the RBI sack fly back in the fourth inning. 
to cut through that four nothing lead for Alabama. Clips the plate, one and two. Snatches her glove out there, grabs the ball out of the air. And two down. Well, Seven Innings Podcast is the weekly podcast that you can find anywhere that you listen to podcasts, ESPN app, iTunes, you name it. And this is one of the series that you all discussed on the podcast earlier this week, Kayla. It was a great weekend and for discussion. I, I mean, so many conferences are coming down to the final week or the final two weeks. There's a lot on the line and Teams are still fighting for that championship. In Oklahoma, Oklahoma State had the potential to be a playing for the championship scenario with Oklahoma being undefeated in conference play and Oklahoma State trying to ruin that a little bit. Minnesota Northwestern battling it out in the Big Ten. And the third out of the inning, but not before Shamaya Sanchez has something to say. Sanchez took this ball for a ride and get one run closer to the tide. This is coming down to the end here in Baton Rouge. Top seven from Baton Rouge, 4-3, Alabama holding tight to that one run lead. And when the tide has the advantage after six innings, they are perfect on the season. They've already claimed a share of their sixth regular season title, the first in five years. They can win it all with a win today or either tomorrow. LSU still has more work to do. They need to come back in this one and win the series finale. Well, there have been a lot of moments in this game, Kayla, to continue to feed into this big series feel. You go back to the third inning, Bailey Hemphill, a part of that, was walked, picked up an RBI with the bases loaded in that instance. Alabama scored three there. Maddie Morgan put up a solo shot to make it four nothing before LSU has scored a run in each of the last three innings. And Wickersham, after giving up the home run to Maddie Morgan, is in a nice job of settling in. You can see she's trying to mix in a little bit of an off speed, a little bit of a, a rise ball to go along with her drop. It's gonna have done a good job of inducing some ground outs for the defense to make plays on. Just getting a piece of that one is Hempill and is thrown out at first. It was a quick inning for Shelby Wickersham in the sixth. She wants to repeat that here and give her teammates an opportunity to answer back and perhaps walk this thing off. 
Pinch hitter and now for Alabama, Caroline Hardy. The senior riding out of big state of Alabama. Take that pitch inside out. Hardy pinch hitting in the spot of Maris Schroeder. Nine hits on the year for the senior. The 2 1 pitch. And chops it right back in front. Wilker, Wickersham fielding her position and now two away. Well, tonight at 11 Eastern, after Alabama Auburn baseball, the SEC Now team will be back with highlights and analysis from all the baseball and softball games on the schedule. You can always watch it on the ESPN app. Two now to KB sides. Shelby Wickersham has retired seven straight batters. Looking for the eighth here. These are these moments for the freshman pitch, pitcher Wickersham that you you know, put it in your back pocket. You know, you got put in a tough position. You made your way out of it, and you've gotten better after this game has progressed and after these Alabama hitters have already seen you. So, you know, she's showing a lot of the good stuff, good movement that she has in her arsenal. And it's so important for you to have games that you can look back on and say, hey, this is when I had this going really well. This is where I know I can hit this pitch. This is where I know I can dig myself out of a tough situation and continue to fight. And she's done that tonight. Sides just getting a piece of that one. Strikeout for Shelby Wickersham. And now she gives her offense an opportunity to come back in this one and even the series. Wickersham goes upstairs to get the big strikeout. We go to the bottom of the seventh. This right here, seventh inning, LSU down by one. And there are hopes of capturing perhaps their first SEC regular season title since 2004 hanging in the balance. They don't win tonight. Their hopes are over. It goes straight to Alabama outright. I mean, does it get any better than that? I mean, I got chills in, in the booth. Let's go. 
They need to win this series in order to clinch a share of the SEC title. Last one coming in 2004. Taryn Antoine, the pinch hitter. The lefty stepping in. Bottom of the order, due up, seven, eight, nine. Antoine hitting 254 on the season. Puts it into play, coming in, charging hard, and Antoine thought she was safe. Instead, she's out at first base and one down for the Tigers. Well, tomorrow we've got a three-hour softball bases loaded for you. We'll take you to all seven games for the live look-ins as the action heats up throughout the day right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Several interesting games. And, of course, the final game of this series between Alabama and LSU starting off at 2 o'clock. Eastern, one local. to Amber Surrett. That one coming in for a strike at 71 miles per hour from the freshman arm, Montana Founts. And Amber, Amber Surrett yesterday hit a shot oppo off of Montana Fouts. It just happened to be the one that KB sides robbed a potential home run for the Tigers earlier in the, in the game. And so she had some good swings against Fouts. Her job in that ninth spot is just to turn the lineup over, find a way to get on base, to get the tying run on base and the winning run on, on, on at the plate. Swing and a miss, good cut there, three and two. It's a really nice shot. This is a fastball by Fouts. Got a little bit of a bite there at the end. Just gets Surrett to swing and miss. The shoes behind the dugout. Rally caps on LSU. Trailing by one. And when you're looking at Montana Fouts and her demeanor, what are you reading from it? I mean, she's so composed for a freshman. I mean, she doesn't let anything face her from a facial point where she's not giving anything up. So she looks steady there. Although Patrick Murphy did say she had a little nerves in game one at Tiger Park. Right back to Fouts. Just flipped out the glove and the ball found its way inside. Fouts has made some plays for herself this weekend. Emma Surrett does a good job of staying inside this and trying to hit it hard up the middle, but just right at the wrong spot and into the glove of Montana Fouts for the second out. Well, if anything's gonna happen, it has to start with Aaliyah Andrews with two outs. Oh 
issue with the way Savannah Stewart's been playing. Get her up to the plate. Yeah. I mean, she's had two hits already today. Two hits yesterday. Quickly 0-2 now for Andrews. This is one of those moments where you have such an incredible hitter and Aliyah Andrews going against one of the toughest pitchers in the entire country. And, you know, with two strikes, what are you going to do? Who's going to win out? Nail biting to the end. As they can only look on from the Tigers' dugout. for the regular season in the SEC. First time since 2014, the Crimson Tide come out on top. As the dog pile happens near home plate, what makes this all the more special is that Alabama winning their first series in Baton Rouge since 2005. And what a way to finish that game. It was so tight. You bring in your freshman Montana Fouts to seal the deal and get the job done. And with the ice in her veins, she does just that, striking out one of the toughest hitters in the entire conference. And the dog pile is on in Baton Rouge. They will be the number one seed in next week's SEC tournament from College Station, Texas. And all hugs, plenty of smiles, and Montana Fouts, the freshman, coming to finish it off. And the first series win at LSU since 2005. This is a tough place to play. And Alabama finds a way to get two big victories in Baton Rouge to seal the deal and be the number one seed in the SEC tournament. Alabama rising to the challenge on the road, picking up a 4-3 victory and winning the SEC regular season title outright. For Caleb Bro, I'm